Hello, and welcome to Business Continuity Planning's Continuity of Operations Plans Training Module. For those of you who are not familiar with our office, let me tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. The Office of Business Continuity Planning develops advanced procedures that enable the university to be prepared to respond effectively to the unthinkable and then get back to business as quickly as possible. Business continuity planning is the process of advanced contingency planning for a disruption to everyday operational activity. These contingencies can be the loss of key staff members, the loss of data, the loss of building accessibility, or the loss of utilities. In this presentation, we will give an introduction to continuity planning, highlight recent disasters higher education, we'll define business continuity, and introduce you to the process of business continuity here at UNC Charlotte. So what is continuity, and why do we need to worry about it? Continuity is the resumption of services at a predetermined objective time. Continuity planning at UNC Charlotte is broken down into business continuity and academic continuity due to the different needs of stakeholders on campus. The business continuity end deals with the administrative services, research, athletics, auxiliary services, housing, and parking, among others, while the academic continuity deals with the online courses, the classrooms, and lab spacing. So why do we do continuity planning? Well, it's just good business practice. It is part of the risk management process, and it promotes resiliency, which is the ability of an organization to absorb the impact of a disaster and continue to function at a minimum acceptable level. Plus, as Benjamin Franklin once said, if you fail to prepare, then you are preparing to fail. Let's begin with some examples of business continuity. The 2013 Boston Marathon bombing resulted in the lockdown of the city of Boston. This included more than 50 institutes of higher education that reside within the city limits. The red circle above Northeastern University is the location of the explosion. The marathon route ran through Boston College, which had to shelter and care for over 1,000 runners and spectators in the immediate aftermath of the bombing. Below is the notification from Alert Boston, telling residents to shelter in place. How would you continue to operate if you couldn't get to campus? What would be the impact of something like that on your department's operations? The important continuity issue here is not only the shelter in place, but the shutdown of transit. Does anybody in your department take public transit to work? What if the Lynx Blue Line extension was shut down? Effective planning will help answer these questions. In 2012, Hurricane Sandy, one of the largest hurricanes ever recorded, hit the East Coast. Hundreds of colleges and universities were affected as tropical storm force winds extended over 500 miles from the center of circulation. The storm cost an estimated $25 billion in lost business activity, and over 8.1 million homes lost power, some as far away as Michigan. The 2007 mass shooting at Virginia Tech killed 32 students. The academic building, which houses classes, offices, and laboratories, was closed for an entire semester and required more than $1 million in renovations. For this type of incident, the productivity loss associated with the impact which was mostly characterized as psychological, is difficult to measure, although we know recruitment rates were not affected. However, the school was fined by the Department of Education for failing to comply with the Clery Act for timely disclosure of public information. The outcomes of the shooting were enhanced counseling services, the creation of threat assessment teams, social media monitoring, and the need for emergency notification systems. At Union University in Jackson, Tennessee, a direct hit by an EF-4 tornado with winds of 166 to 200 miles an hour destroyed over 18 residence halls and caused more than $40 million in damages. 80% of the campus was unlivable, while 1,800 students were displaced. The campus was closed for an entire two weeks with alternate housing provided off-site. A structure fire at the main building at Our Lady of the Lake University moved quickly and became a three to four alarm fire in just under an hour. Fire crews used five pumper trucks to battle the blaze. The main building suffered fire and water damage, which was the result of an electrical short. Reconstruction of the building took over two years. While we remember that Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans and Tulane University, storm surge won't impact UNC Charlotte. 
However, large hurricanes, such as Hurricane Sandy, can affect many institutions at once. The 2008 flooding of the University of Iowa is more comparable to a flood at UNC Charlotte could experience. In this case, 20 buildings flooded. Fortunately, volunteers were prepared prior to the event to safely evacuate campus, the library's valuable collections, and millions of dollars in fine art. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, North Carolina is one of the most likely states to experience weather events causing more than $1 billion in damages. In 2010, the entire D.C., Maryland, and Virginia metro area were shut down for several weeks following two major snow events that struck the area. Similarly, UNC Charlotte experienced conditions uh, such as that in January 2011 when the start of the spring semester was delayed due to inclement weather for nearly one week. Not all disruptions are due to a disaster, and using continuity of operations plans are not limited to only disaster situations. Business interruptions come in many forms. Any abnormal disruption of services will be an appropriate time to activate a coup. If UNC Charlotte had hosted the Democratic National Convention and its personnel, it could have cost the university over $3 million to recover the losses. Here at Institutes of Higher Education, we do sweat the small stuff, but business continuity does not plan for scenario. We plan contingencies in the event of a business disruption. This contrasts with emergency management, which plans for scenarios and prevents further harm to life and property. Departments should be concerned about developing actionable continuity of operations plans for the safety of your staff and the continuity of your department. Doing things such as practicing the contingency plan steps on a regular basis will familiarize the process and make implementing procedures during a disaster much easier. So what is business continuity? Business continuity is the process of developing advanced arrangements and procedures that enable an organization to respond to an event with a negative impact to the organization. It is made up of a continuity of operations plan or COOP, a business impact analysis or BIA, a risk assessment, and a campus-wide business continuity plan or BCP. A COOP is the vehicle that assists organizations to develop business continuity plans through the identification of operational and financial impacts, exposures, and critical business functions. A business impact analysis assists the prioritization of critical business functions for restoration. A risk assessment identifies vulnerabilities, gaps, areas for improvement, and strategies for mitigation. The business continuity plan determines damage assessment planning and priorities during disasters. Business continuity is not emergency management or disaster recovery. Emergency management is the process of planning and responding to incidents that impact people and property and safely de-escalating a disaster scenario, while di disaster recovery is the process of identifying mission-critical applications, prioritizing recovery, and business continuity planning for IT services. The business continuity strategy begins with executive level buy-in and moves to unit level continuity of operations plans. Once all the coops are finished, the data is then aggregated into a department level BIA. Subsequently, a department level risk assessment is done. We then test the plan to validate it and evaluate the plan to find strengths and improvement areas. Doing all of this helps create a disaster resilient university. So what information is contained within a coop? In the COOP, we identify communications, list and confirm alternate locations, list our response plans, we list our dependencies, and we allow for succession and delegation of authority. The Continuity Operations Plan is a grassroots project. We do that at the lowest possible department or business unit level within the hierarchy of an organization. The Business Impact Analysis determines the effect of interrupted services on each unit. We also look at short and long-term effects of a disaster on service interruptions and financial impacts. We also look at the impact to goodwill. Goodwill is an intangible asset that reflects a business's customer connections, reputation, and other similar factors. An example of this is UNC Charlotte's reputation and relationship with prospective students, parents, and other customers. The BIA is usually delivered in a separate survey but the COOP is modified to produce this information at no additional time for your staff. 
The business continuity plan integrates information from the COOP, BIA, and risk assessment with strategies to develop plans for continuity. It also identifies resource allocation for prioritized functions. The campus-wide business continuity plan is created only after all the information from the COOPs and BIAs are gathered. UNC Charlotte has assets valued in the billions. We invest in cutting-edge research programs and are committing to educating the next generation. We are the fourth largest institution of higher education in the UNC system, with one major campus and three smaller campuses. There are over 29,000 students, faculty, and staff at the university, and we have a budget of over $450 million. The campus has over 1,000 acres, over 100 buildings, is 8 miles to uptown Charlotte, and within 30 miles of two nuclear power stations. There are several challenges to continuity of operations after a disruption. Here at UNC Charlotte, we need to account for education, research, administrative, athletics, and support functions, and we need to prioritize the resumption of services. How do we do all this? We do all this through the COOP. When developing a COOP plan for business units, the process is a series of face-to-face -face meetings with the Office of Business Continuity Planning. We begin by identifying the continuity coordinators whose responsibility will be completing the plan and as a point of contact. We have an introductory meeting in which the COOP is explained and then a rough draft is done. The Office of Business Continuity Planning analyzes the rough draft and a review meeting is scheduled. If necessary, a third meeting is set to answer any remaining questions. The plan is then sought for approval and is tested to validate it. So what is contained within the COOP? When completing your COOP, it is necessary to list all of the critical functions within your unit. In the context of a COOP, a critical function is one that is integral to the normal processes of the unit which need to be restored following a business disruption. We need to analyze the effect of the loss of a critical function or process, and that can be the loss of revenue, increased costs, any legal liability or penalties, the loss of goodwill or other intangibles. We need to understand the ability to operate at a reduced efficiency and understand our recovery time objective, which is the time by which a pre-agreed level of operations needs to be restored. We want to look at key dependencies, both internal and external, and we also want to look at our contingency plans. We need to create contingency plans that could be working from home if campus is closed. It could also be storing a copy of important information on multiple formats, such as the university server, CDs, flash drives, etc. This is an example of the critical function section, section H, of the COOP. This section requests the continuity coordinator to describe the critical business functions of the unit that support its mission. The critical business function should be measurable, but not microscopic. This section is paramount to the COOP. Later in the COOP, it is asked that these same critical functions are prioritized, characterized, and given a recovery time objective in the form of a defined criticality level. The continuity coordinator is then asked to describe the tasks necessary to resume that critical business function. This interdependency map shows the interdependencies for business units with completed COOPs at UNC Charlotte. This information is captured by the COOP and analyzed by the Office of Business Continuity Planning using visual analytics software. Figuring out which departments on campus you depend on to deliver mission essential services will help you plan for disruptions to your operations. At the department level, Cultivating relationships and keeping open lines of communication within UNC Charlotte and outside stakeholders is crucial. This can help you secure alternate locations if necessary. As you saw in the interdependency map, we depend on many departments throughout the university. The Department of Risk Management, Safety, and Security collaborates with local, state, and federal governments as well as private sector partners and professional associations to assist with the planning and reception of services. Once an incident occurs, it is up to the administrative hierarchy in your department to decide whether to activate your COOP plan. The Office of Business Continuity will provide support and resources. The COOP's decision tree will tell you in a general way under what circumstances to activate the COOP. Once the COOP is activated, 
look towards your critical functions to see what essential functions you need to stay operational. Section P of the COOP will tell you what steps are needed to bring back your, those critical functions. The COOP is a vehicle for capturing your critical information about restoring your business operations. The Business Continuity Plan will identify prioritization of business service restoration and resumption during a disaster. The Test Training and Exercise Program will assist business units and departments with practice and training for disaster scenarios. The Test Training Exercise Program will be focused more on business unit exercises and using the COOP efficiently and effectively. You can also assist your employees by doing informal everyday things such as knowing where the COOP is located, who is responsible for what, and the strategy for activating the COOP. What are the takeaways? Business continuity is different and distinct from emergency management and IT disaster recovery. We plan for contingencies and we prioritize for contingencies such as the loss of key data, the loss of building accessibility, the loss of staff, or the disruption to utilities. Business continuity is designed to analyze the impacts, create continuity strategies, and save costs associated with a disruption. The Department of Risk Management, Safety, and Security uses business continuity to assist university staff in creating their contingency plans. Thank you for your time today. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the Office of Business Continuity Plan at UNC Charlotte and visit our website at bcp.uncc.edu.